Hi friends, welcome to my another video. Today in this video, I will discuss about what is VFD, variable frequency drive, and how it controls the speed of the motor. This will be very important as VFD is now very popular in industrial and commercial building. In order to better understand the operation of variable frequency drive, it is very important to know what are the different parameters which is affecting the speed of the motor. If we will know, then we can understand the VFD operation very easily. So let's start, start first. What are the different parameters which is affecting the speed of the motor? Whenever we are giving power supply to the induction motor, then this power supply will have three parameters. First one is voltage, second one is current, and third one is frequency. It means we have to control these parameters in order to control the speed of the motor. Or the second option is we need to play with the construction of the motor in order to change the speed of the motor. So we have two options now. Either we have to play with the construction of motor, we have to do some alteration in the motor itself or we have to do the alteration in the any of the parameter of the power supply. Now let us change first the voltage, power supply voltage to the induction motor and analyze what is happening with the speed of the motor. So our first case is, case is changing the applied voltage of the induction motor. As we know that the torque of the induction motor is equal to K1 into S E2 square into R2 divided by root 2 R2 square plus S into X2 square. This is very complicated formula I know but just to understand this concept you understand that the torque is directly proportional to the induced EMF in the rotor. And the induced EMF in the rotor is directly proportional to the voltage applied on the induction motor. So what we understood so far that the torque in the induction motor is directly proportional to the voltage square. So if we will decrease the voltage, we will decrease the torque. And as the torque is a rotating force, if we are decreasing the voltage, then the rotating force of the induction motor will reduce. And as the rotating motor, rotating force of the motor will reduce, then the speed of speed of the motor will reduce. Now let us analyze in the opposite case. We are increasing the voltage. Then the torque will increase. It means we are increasing the force of rotating of the rotor by increasing the voltage. As the force of rotating force of the rotor we are increasing, it means we are increasing the speed of the motor. From this discussion, it is very clear that by increasing and decreasing of the applied voltage we can increase and decrease the speed of the motor but from this relation it is very clear that the torque is directly proportional to the voltage square as the torque is directly proportional to the voltage square it means that for the small change in the speed of the motor we need large change in the supplied voltage so the range of regulating the speed of the motor is very narrow when we are changing the speed of the motor by changing the supplied voltage and there is a another problem also suppose the motor is running okay and we want to decrease the speed of the motor so we decreases the supplied voltage in the motor now as we decreases the supply voltage in order to reduce the torque and as we seen that for the small change in the speed, we need to decrease the supply voltage in a large amount. So as we decrease the supply voltage in the large amount, there might be a chances that the load which is connected with this motor is required certain amount of torque to rotate. But due to decrease in the large amount of supply voltage, the torque get reduced more than that. In that case, the low, the mechanical load which is connected with the motor will not have that sufficient torque to rotate by the motor. So in that time, the motor will slowly become into the standstill position and this will be called as a failure of the motor. Now let us take another case also. Suppose the motor is in standstill position. Okay, it is resting and we want to start the motor with the lower voltage. Okay, but there is a mechanical load connected to the motor due to a large amount of voltage decreased in order to have a lesser speed of the motor. 
there is a chance that the motor will not even start as the required torque which is required to run the connected load is not sufficient in that time. So there is always a problem to regulate the speed of the induction motor by regulating the voltage. So this method generally not been used in the practical situation. From this discussion we can conclude that by reducing the supply voltage in order to control the motor speed have a very very big drawback that in order to reduce the speed of the motor we are compromising with the torque of the motor which is not good. So this method is not used in the practical situation as to achieve a certain speed of the motor we are compromising with the torque of the motor also. So here we can conclude that by only regulating the voltage of the supply power regulating the motor speed is not a correct practice. So now let us move to the next method of regulating the speed of the motor. As we know that the synchronous speed is given as 120 F by P where the F is the frequency in Hertz and P is the number of pole and NS is the synchronous speed in RPM rotation per minute. The speed of the motor is equal to N is equal to NS into 1 minus S. But this N speed of the rotor is directly proportional to the synchronous speed of the motor. So if we will change the synchronous speed of the motor we can have the command to change the speed of the rotor. So here in our discussion I will throughout talk about the synchronous speed as if we have command to increase and decrease the synchronous speed then we have indirectly command on increasing and decreasing of the rotor speed. By increasing and decreasing the supply power frequency we can control the synchronous speed and accordingly we can control the rotor speed. Here the synchronous speed is for the rotating magnetic field and here the S represents the slip means how much percentage the rotor speed is lagging behind the synchronous speed. But don't go in that deep discussion because our topic here is different. So what our concern is now what our motto is now we can increase and decrease the frequency of the power supply then we can have the control on the synchronous speed. Here there is a other parameter also that is the pole in the induction motor. If we can change the pole of the induction motor also we can regulate the synchronous speed of the motor. So we will check one by one. First we will check how we can change the pole of the synchronous uh, sorry induction motor in order to have the control on the synchronous speed and then we will check how we can change the frequency of the power supply in order to have control on the synchronous speed. So let us discuss first how we can control the speed of the motor by changing the stator poles. As we know that how we undate the stator winding of the motor depend on that we will get the number of poles. Suppose we undate the stator winding in this manner then this will be a two pole induction motor because for R phase there is a two pole, for yellow phase there is a two pole and for blue phase there is a two pole. So this motor is a two pole motor. If we undid the stator winding in this manner then we can say that this motor is a four pole induction motor because for each phase there is a four pair one, two, three, four. Four for red phase, four for yellow phase and four for blue phase. So this induction motor stator winding have four poles. If we undid the stator winding in this manner then we can say that this is a six pole induction motor. You can count here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. For each phase there is a six pole so this is a six pole induction motor. But from the figure you can say you can imagine that increasing the number of poles in the induction motor makes the induction motor stator winding very complicated. Now you can imagine that one that thing also that by switching the induction motor from two pole to four pole or from four pole to six pole is more complicated. Meaning if we have such mechanism that the six pole induction motor stator winding we can switch to four pole or two pole then we need a more complicated winding structure in the stator. So it is possible but we cannot go for ten pole to two pole or 12 poles to 2 pole because it will increase the complexity of the stator winding. So we can do it but for the very limited range. 
Suppose I have a six pole induction motor which have a mechanism that it can switch to four pole induction motor and it can switch to two pole induction motor. Okay, then suppose there is a six pole induction motor, then the speed of the induction motor is 1000 rpm. As the speed we calculated, we know from this formula NS is equal to 120 F by P. So by this formula, we got the speed of the induction motor 1000 rpm. Now we switch this six pole induction motor to four pole induction motor. Then the speed of the induction motor became as 1500 rpm. Now we switch again the six pole induction motor to two pole induction motor. Then the speed of the induction motor became 3000 rpm. But as I told you, it become very complicated to switch eight pole induction motor to two pole or 12 pole induction motor to two pole because making a 12 pole induction motor need more complex stator winding. So suppose in this three poles, six pole, four pole and two pole, we got three speed of a same motor, but it is a fix. We cannot go between 3000 to 1500 or between 1500 to 1000. It is a fix by changing the poles of the motor. We will get a constant speed and we will have a very limited range and it is increasing the complexity of the stator winding also. So this method is not that popular as we have to make the motor winding complicated and the result we are getting is very limited. So we can say that by playing with the induction motor winding, we can change the speed of the motor, but the range of changing the speed of the induction motor is very limited. So this method is also not very popular and not been used in a practical situation. As we know that, the current is just a cause of the voltage. It means whatever result we are getting by changing the voltage of the power supply on the speed of the induction motor, same result we will get by changing the current as we can change the current by varying the voltage only because the current is just a cause of voltage. So this parameter also will not help us to change the speed of the motor. Now let us focus on the frequency. As we seen from the same formula, that we can regulate the synchronous speed of the motor by changing the frequency. But by changing simply the frequency of the power supply in order to regulate the speed of the motor also have some complication. What is that complication? We know that the voltage have a formula 4.4 into phi into k into t into f meaning if we will increase the frequency of the power supply by keeping the voltage constant then the flux density will decrease and when we will increase decrease the frequency of the power supply in order to regulate the synchronous speed of the motor the flux density will increase if we will decrease the frequency in order to regulate the speed of the motor then the flux density will increase this will lead to the saturation of the core saturation of core means the high current in the stator which means the overheating so this is not good for the motor and suppose if we want to increase the frequency in order to regulate the synchronous speed of the motor meaning we are decreasing the flux as the flux go down then it will affect the torque and motor will have insufficient torque to drive the mechanical connected load so by simply increasing and decreasing of the frequency Yes, we can control the speed of the motor, but it has many consequences. Meaning, when we are increasing the frequency in order to reg reg regulate the motor speed, the flux density is going down, meaning it will compromise with the torque of the motor. And when we are decreasing the frequency in order to regulate the motor, then the flux density is going high, which lead to the saturation of the motor, of the core. So by simply changing the frequency of the power supply it's not a good idea to change the speed of the motor so from this discussion we can conclude that by regulating voltage and current of a power supply we are not having a good control on the motor speed and by changing the poles also we are having a very limited range of controlling of the motor speed so this is also not a very good idea and by changing the frequency of the power supply we are also having some problems while 
increasing and decreasing the frequency as it's resulting to the saturation and it is compromising with the torque of the motor so by only changing the frequency also it's not a good idea for controlling the speed of the motor i want to give here one very important information that this induction motor is invented in late 80s like in 8088 or in 8089 by a great scientist nikola tesla but this motor was not very popular till 100 years of its invention why because the controlling speed of the induction motor is very hard as we seen in our discussion by changing the voltage by changing the current by changing the frequency and by changing the poles of the induction motor we are not getting good result and we have facing many consequences in order to control the speed of the motor but after 100 years vfd came into the picture vfd variable frequency drive get invented in 1980s after almost 100 years of invention of induction motor and once the vfd got invented the induction motor become very popular and in this 40 to 50 years now induction motor replace all types of motor because the speed control of the induction motor through vfd become very easy and now 80 to 85% of the motor you will find that it is all induction motor and especially if i will say it is a squirrel cage induction motor by using the vfd we are overcoming all the problem which we are facing during controlling of the speed by regulating the voltage current frequency and poles vfd overcoming all of this problem and now the vfd is very popular and frequently used in the industries so our topic was what is vfd and how it's control the speed of the motor this will this i will discuss in part 2 but in this video i explain these things in order to know the importance of vfd if i will directly start with the vfd control then you will not get that importance of vfd as without vfd if we are going to change the these parameters like voltage current frequency and pole what are the problem we are facing to control the speed of the induction motor i hope you find this video informative i will upload part 2 video within 2 to 3 days i will deeply discuss what is vfd and what are the different components of vfd and how it is controlling the speed of the motor i hope you like this video if you really find this video informative then please subscribe to my channel hit the thumbs up button and share with your friend we will meet in any other video till then take care keep learning and bye bye thank you so much